Welcome to this special online audio accompaniment to Farm Hall by Catherine Moore, directed by Stephen Unwin, which is on at the Theatre Royal in Bath in the main house from Wednesday the 12th to Saturday the 15th of April 2023, with performances Wednesday to Saturday at 7.30pm and matinees on Thursday and Saturday at 2.30pm. The performance lasts for approximately 1 hour and 40 minutes without an interval. This audio accompaniment includes information on the play, summary, characters, set, props and costume, plus theatre and access information. We also hear from writer Catherine Moore, who talks about the inspiration for the play and what some of the visual elements are. This special online audio accompaniment is written and presented by Tim Calvert in collaboration with the Audio Description Association for the Theatre Royal Bath. A Summary of Farm Hall It's summer 1945, Hitler is dead, Germany is defeated, the war in the Pacific rages on. In England, six of Germany's foremost scientists are detained following their capture by Allied forces. They are Hitler's uranium club. The men tasked with producing an atomic bomb for the Nazis stowed away safely in Farm Hall, a stately home nestled in a quiet corner of the Cambridgeshire countryside, These guests of His Majesty are forced to entertain themselves, removed from the chaos of war and convinced of their scientific superiority. They while away the hours playing chess, restoring a broken piano and rehearsing an all-male amateur production of Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit. But the war and the world cannot be shut out forever. The guests' tranquil summer is shattered by the revelation that the unthinkable has occurred that the Americans have succeeded where the Germans have failed, that the United States has not only built an atomic bomb, but has used one against Japan. During their seven-month detainment, unbeknownst to its occupants, almost every inch of farm hall was bugged. The guests' recorded conversations were translated, transcribed and finally in 1992, declassified and published as the farm hall transcripts. This play is inspired by the Farm Hall transcripts and by true events that occurred at Farm Hall between July 1945 and January 1946. A description of characters. The play consists of six characters. Von Lau, portrayed by David Youngland, is in his late 60s, an open objector to Nazism. He played no role in Hitler's Uranium Club and won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1914 for the discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. He is of medium build with silver hair and wears a smart brown suit with a white shirt and red braces and a red and black geometric style tie, black socks and tan lace-up leather shoes. He often sits on the armchair reading and a lot of the time looks straight-faced, not showing much emotion. Diebner is portrayed by Julius de Silva. He is in his early 40s. He was the head of Hitler's Uranium Club when it was under the control of the Army Audience Office. He is a Nazi party member. He has broad shoulders with a bald head and wears dark rimmed glasses. He is in a smart black double-breasted suit like you'd wear at a funeral. White shirt and a silver and black pattern tie with matching lace-up black shoes. He is a no-nonsense sort of character that often appears blunt and serious, but some warmth does shine through in later conversations. Heisenberg, portrayed by Alan Cox, is in his early 50s. At the start of the 1940s, he replaced Kurt Diebner as the symbolic leader of Hitler's Uranium Club, when the army ceded control of the Reich Research Council. He won the Nobel Prize in 1932 for the creation of quantum mechanics. He has short, cropped grey hair, is of medium build and wears a dark grey suit with a white shirt, red and silver striped tie, black socks and black leather lace-up shoes. He is a natural leader and often offers help and support to the rest of the men. Weizsäcker, portrayed by Daniel Boyd, is in his early 30s. He is Eisenberg's close friend and colleague, a member of the prominent Weizsäcker family. His father served as state secretary at the Foreign Office of Nazi Germany from 1938 to 1943 and as its ambassador to the Holy See from 1943 to 1945. His younger brother would serve as president of Germany between 1984 and 1994. 
He is of medium build, charismatic, with short dark hair. He wears a sand-coloured smart suit with white shirt and tie and matching waistcoat with black socks and brown shoes. He makes the most of his time at Farm Hall and has a positive outlook. Bag, portrayed by Archie Backhouse, is in his early 30s. He's Heisenberg's former student and a Nazi party member. According to Heisenberg, Bag came from a proletarian family. He is tall and appears youthful, with short black curly hair. He wears dark rim glasses, a smart grey jacket with silver grey trousers that don't match, white shirt with black braces and matching tie, black socks, black leather lace-up shoes and he wears a black leather strap watch. He has a vulnerability about him and is a little impressionable. Hahn, portrayed by Forbes Mason, is in his early 60s and discovered nuclear fission, the process that makes an atomic bomb possible and worked on it throughout the war. He received the 1944 Nobel Prize for Chemistry for this discovery. He is anti-Nazi, has short ginger hair that's balding on top, of medium build and wears a grey suit with a charcoal waistcoat, white shirt, a black tie with silver stripes on, black socks and black shoes. He has a black handkerchief that he uses during the story and he also wears a black leather strap watch. He is enthusiastic about making the most of his time at Farm Hall and is eager to take part in activities. A description of the set As you take your seat for Farm Hall, the set is open to you and consists of a cosy reception room big enough to hold six people inside, a stately home that has seen better days. The space is 7.9 metres wide and 3.5 metres deep. There is a wall at the side and at the back that are decorated with different strips of floral and striped wallpaper with patches missing. On the walls are various framed portraits and landscape pictures and wall lamps that are spaced out. In the centre is a wooden mantelpiece and fireplace. On the ledge are pink tulips in a vase, a white ceramic figure of a shepherdess, two candlesticks and a framed photo. There are doors on either side. On the left, the door blends in with the wallpaper and is unseen, but is used for characters to enter and exit. The door on the right is a brown oak door with door handle that leads to a wallpapered corridor. By the side of this is a burnt orange armchair with a side table and standing cream lamp. On the left-hand side, there is a shelf with books on it. And in front of it is a circular wooden table with four odd cushioned chairs that don't match. On the right-hand side is an upright piano that when the play begins is covered in a sheet. Next to this is a wooden chair and small table. The floor is made up of brown wood tiles with two red odd-matching Persian rugs on either side. Important props and visual elements The play begins dimly lit as a telephone conversation is heard before anyone appears. All the action takes place in one location. In between each scene, the lights fade and classical piano music plays, taking you into the next scene as the lights come back up again. Characters enter from doors on the left and right. During the course of the drama, the characters alternate between standing, sitting around the table, taking turns sitting in the armchair, or in the wooden chair on the right-hand side next to the piano. As the play begins, the characters are rehearsing the play Blythe Spirit. Those speaking stand in the centre reading from their scripts. Scenes often begin with characters sitting in the armchair reading a book. In scene 5, Hahn is mending the piano with tools from a blue metal toolbox. The front panel of the piano is removed and returned in time for the start of scene 6, with Weizsäcker playing the piano with his fellow guests standing around him. In scene 7, the characters are writing letters, some around the table. There is a tea tray with white teacups laid out on the table. In scene 8, the tea tray is replaced with a pile of books. In scene 10, a radio is placed on the mantelpiece and they all drink neat gin out of crystal cut tumblers. In scene 13, Heisenberg is sitting at the table with papers laid out in front of him, with a black leather briefcase sitting on the chair beside him. And in scene 14, which takes place in January 1946, the characters enter holding suitcases that they place on the floor in the centre of the room. This is towards the end of the play. Some have brown trilby hats, scarves and long wool overcoats. They all stand together drinking fizz from glass flutes.
Playwright Catherine Moore discusses the inspiration for the play, plus key visual aspects of the production. So the inspiration for the play were the farm hall transcripts. Near the end of the Second World War, the Allies kind of swept across Germany and picked up all these German nuclear scientists who had worked on the atomic bomb project and they stowed them in this stately home in the Cambridge countryside and they bugged the whole house. They secretly recorded all their conversations because they were trying to find out how far the Germans had got with the with building an atomic bomb. So they had these transcripts, they were kept secret for 50 years and they were only made public in the 90s. Yeah, I read the transcripts and I thought that they were just really interesting and the, one of the first things that struck me was how well it would work as a play. Yeah, so the, the, the kind of the key thing about the play was that it was all set in one room. So it's set in the drawing room of Farm Hall across across six months. Um, that was the really only criteria and it had to kind of be, it wasn't really fancy but it had to feel you know, it's a stately home, it had to feel a bit a bit posh but also a bit kind of tired and the set designer's done a really great job of doing that because what she has created are these kind of like layers of different types of wallpaper to show that the house has been lived in by different groups of people with different tastes. There's, you know, the, the house has had a previous life and that's also matched with the furniture, which is all kind of a bit higgledy-piggledy. It's like a charity shop, so lots of different types of furniture from different eras, um, different types of wood, lots of kind of mismatched art and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it's come out very nicely. But it's quite quite helpful for a space like this that it is just one room so a lot of the furniture just stays in place and the characters will come in and out with the props that they need but a lot of the furniture just stays stays put so that we've got six characters in this place six scientists and they're different ages they're different classes they're different uh, political affiliations some of them are very wealthy some of them aren't so costume was a really helpful way of showing that and also some of them are uh, real traditionalists so in that sense they spend they spend the entirety of the play full suit and tie you know jacket done up very held together whereas some of the characters are more casual and they roll their sleeves up and they take their jackets and their ties off and stuff like that so costume is 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 really important to show those distinctions between the characters so because the play is set in one room across kind of six or seven months so we've talked a bit about the set but the the props are very important for each character because it kind of it shows the passage of time and each character acquires a prop that kind of becomes important to them so they have some might have books or a pen or a handkerchief chief just the kind of you know the the the, just the stuff really that you acquire when you spend you spend a long time in one place and also it's an important part of the story what stuff they have access to because like there's a limited number of books in the house um so they just kind of go around reading the same books over and over again so yeah it's the kind of nature of the props that we have highlights the, the kind of cyclical we're just stuck somewhere we've only got one chess set one set of backgammon one pack of cards six books to read so yeah the, those visual aspects were important in that way so it was it was very much a collaborative process between you know me the writer and then Steve Unwin the director and each of the actors it was it was a really wonderful process they just really mined every single word for for each significance and establishing these characters they these characters all know each other from before the war so they all have a shared history they all like each other don't like each other find each other irritating so it was they had to have a, a kind of easy rapport with each other that comes from having worked together for x number of years before you're locked in a confined space together so yeah and a lot of that was from researching the individual characters but also you know learning about their real life histories but then i think at a certain point the actors did just have to say i'm i'm playing a version of a real person i'm not trying to really play the actual person um, and I think just having a lot of yeah a lot of freedom a lot of discussion about why they say the words they say what they're thinking in each moment because this is such a kind of talking and thinking play and it's very much an ensemble piece so when you have six people in the room not everyone's talking at once so it's those moments of two people are having a conversation over here what are the other four characters doing how are they reacting to what's being said theatre and access information for the theatre royal bath the Theatre Royal Bath is situated in the heart of the city, in between the May Bath Spa and the Jane Austen Centre. The main house consists of 900 seats on four levels, the stalls, Royal Circle, Dress Circle and Grand Circle. A virtual tour of the venue is available by visiting the website and selecting access. There is lift access in the main house to the stalls and Royal Circle only. There is adapted toilet access on all levels. To book tickets or to discuss your access needs, the box office team are here to help in any way they can, so contact them on 01 
or by emailing boxoffice at thetheatreroyal.org.uk. This audio accompaniment was written, presented and produced by Tim Calvert as part of a special project commissioned by the Audio Description Association to make theatre without audio description accessible for those visually impaired. For further information about audio description, visit audiodescription.co.uk. Thanks for listening.